Well, good morning. It's November 10th, about 9.30 in the morning. It's 36 degrees, kind of foggy outside, high humidity. And this is the biochar that we made yesterday. And uh, I quenched it, and so the whole kiln is basically full of water. I, I leave it overnight just to uh, fill with water to make sure everything gets quenched real good. And so now this morning what I'm going to do is I'm going to drain the, drain the kiln and drain the water out. And then um, this is the second part of a three-part series on backyard biochar. And <clears throat> what I'm going to do, what we did the first part is make biochar. Second part is we're going to process the biochar. And the third part is we're going to garden with the biochar. So uh, this part here in, entails draining the, draining the biochar and then I'll run it through a, a, a quarter inch screen and uh, then we'll wash the biochar with rainwater and uh, then that should complete the second part. What I'm going to do this morning before I drain it, I have some uh, litmus paper and I'm going to take a pH uh, reading of what the biochar is before we do anything to it. Okay, here's my screen and, and my bucket. So what I'll do is I get a shovel full of biochar and it's quarter inch screen hardware cloth over a about a 20 gallon bucket and so what I'll do is toss a shovel full of biochar up on top of here and then with the shovel just kind of rake it back and forth and sift it through the screen It's all accumulating in the bucket there, and so that's what I do. It seems kind of labor intensive, but it gets a job done, and uh, that's what we're looking for. Okay, I've only been out this a couple of minutes, but here's the finished screen pro product. I'll toss a quarter in there, and that'll give you an idea of the size of the biochar particles that's a real nice size I use it for seedling mix uh, and run it through the compost and heaping in the garden and uh, works real good and another thing about having it moist is I don't have the dust problem Sometimes when you hit these things with a billy goat or something like that after they dried out, they put out a bunch of dust and you sure don't want to be breathing that. Give you coal, coal miners black lung. Okay, I've been sifting this biochar for about 20 minutes now and you can see I have a pretty goodly amount of uh, sifted biochar. Now, uh, this is just the first part of, of the process of making our biochar ready for the garden. First part is making the biochar. The second is processing it. And uh, so now I screened it down to my desired particle size. And so what I need to do now is to wash the biochar. You can see from the original biochar that it had a lot of leaves and stuff in there, so consequently there's a, probably a lot of ash buildup and uh, some other Im impurities. So what I do is I take this sifted biochar and I put it in a barrel that has holes in the bottom of it and I put it under the eaves of a roof and I let the rainwater wash the biochar. And then when, uh, after a couple of rainstorms, I have some very, very clean biochar that's ready for uh, seed starting 
or to add into my compost pile and let the biodynamic process turn this biochar into biochar compost. So the next process we'll do after screening is to wash the biochar. Okay, this is the next step in the biochar process. We screen the biochar and now we're going to rinse it or wash it. I have a, a couple of barrels here underneath the shed roof and what happens, I'll, I'll put the biochar in that black barrel. The rainwater will come down and, and rinse it because rinse it out there's some holes in the bottom of that black barrel for the water to seep, sift through and, and carry out the impurities. Uh, we have a lot of ash in, in, this, in this biochar and so we want to wash it out. Here in Oregon uh, we don't want ash in our soils because it, it creates an, an acid type of a situation and so the first two numbers in the equation we want to focus on is nitrogen and phosphates. The uh, wood ash we, we really don't want here in our soils here. So we're going to rinse that out. Okay, well here's a biochar that I just took out of the barrel that has already been that's been washed for a few rainstorms and it is some really nice looking clean biochar. You know, uh, to assess the quality of your biochar, I, one reason I like having a flooded kiln is because uh, you can scrape some of that biochar away and, and look at the condition of the water that's left over after quenching the kiln. And if it has like rainbow, uh, stuff on top of the water you know that there's some oils that might have been uh, burned in in the biochar and so you know there's few contaminants so um, that's the reason you know we were rinsing this stuff out because occasionally you know other than ash in in our biochar we're also going to get some impurities that are in the wood oils and esters and terpenes and things like that so it's a good idea to rinse out your biochar okay i poured a couple of buckets of water in this biochar and you can see it's evacuating out of the bottom of the barrel the color of it's pretty dark that's you know that's biochar dust, that's fine particles of biochar and probably a lot of uh, ash and other impurities. There's a, another way to test for, test for the quality of your biochar and that's to uh, get a little bit of biochar in your fingers like this and kind of uh, break up a, a chunk or two then you have all this biochar on your fingers then the test is to uh, just rinse your hands off in, in some fresh water and your fingers should come out clean if it takes soap and water to get the black off, that means you have a lot of oils left in your biochar and you need to do some washing. So there's another quality, quality uh, experiment you can do to make sure you're getting good high quality biochar. So I put a couple of buckets on this thing and I'll, now that I have uh, biochar clean, um, I can go ahead and process it again through the third step in the process and that's charging the biochar. Biochar should be charged either by composting or by compost tea or some means of uh, getting nutrients into your biochar. Your biochar is just a huge sponge and it's going and it's a, a dry sponge now. It's got a lot of holes in it. 
And so you want to fill those holes with nutrients and also with uh, biodynamic critters and organisms and fungi. And, um, and another thing too, it's a good idea to um, make sure that your compost medium has your garden soil uh, in it so that your, your biochar will be imprinted with your garden soil. Uh, so that your biochar will have a memory of or an initiation of your garden so that all the organisms will be uh, nice and, and welcomed home when they're added to your garden. This is a biodynamic process of your garden. It's a very important one. Imprinting is very important to a biodynamic garden. Okay, so this is the third segment of processing uh, biochar. First step is to, after making biochar, the first step in processing is to sift it. Then the second process is to wash it. And here I have some washed biochar. And thirdly is to charge it. And I find charging it in a compost pile a very effective way of, of getting uh, all the biodynamics into my biochar and having it imprinted and ready to go into my garden. And so um, I'll be adding this washed biochar into my compost pile and then I'll layer it like just as I would as I'm you know making a biochar pile and over here is a finished pile that I've been harvesting from and you can see how nice and dark it is so this is biochar compost and it is wonderful it is one of the best soil amendments I've ever used Okay, in the processing part of the biochar, we already talked about sifting or crushing the biochar, about rinsing the biochar, and now we're talking about charging the biochar, and, and we put a bunch of biochar down in our compost pile. But I have a worm farm here, and it has a bunch of uh, worm chelate that uh, comes out of the worm farm, and what I do is I pour that on my compost pile and also on the biochar that's in the compost pile and add additional charging there too. And another thing I use my raw biochar that has been washed is uh, the filter underneath the worm farm that filters the chelate. And I use biochar instead of uh, coconut noir. And so this is the filter that's underneath the uh, worm farm. It's between the biomass that's being fed to the worms and between the, the reservoir that holds the chelate water. And this is biochar and it filters the uh, chelate out. And so I put this in my uh, compost pile too because this is very, this is like supercharged biochar. But everything I do runs through my compost pile because I, uh, it's a biodynamic process that, that I grew up with. Okay, so now I'm, I poured some worm chelate into a watering can and I'll sprinkle it over my biochar, my wash biochar that's in the compost pile. <laughs> 